let's look at the basics of running checkdb. And this is more comprehensive than the dbcc check table. It does run dbcc check table, of course, behind the scenes on all the tables and views. But this is one of the reasons why we can use dbcc check table for a more granular uh, look, for instance, if a check DB runs very long. As a case in point, one time I ran into a situation where it was a, I think a 30 megabyte database, so a very small database, that check DB was taking about seven hours to run and then failing. And we're talking about on a server that had plenty of resources as well. And so what I did was I went and I applied check table to each of the tables because it's all about process of elimination. Yeah, we can run the check catalog and the check allocation as well. But the idea is, first of all, I want to see if there's a problematic object. And sure enough, there was. And so that was what was causing it to consume so much time and, and space as well because you have to remember it's going to put all that into the temp temporary database, tempdb. So uh, that was the other thing too is tempdb was blowing up. Um, and you want to stay on top of tempdb when you run checkdb because that can be a, a concern. So that's one of the reasons why uh, check table is that granular approach. It can be very useful if checkdb uh, goes long, fails, whatnot. You can apply a more granular approach. It also runs check catalog and it runs check allocation. So these are dbcc uh, commands that it runs on the database itself. And then, of course, it validates other objects. It validates things in the database such as the service broker, the metadata, consistency, etc. And uh, let's go ahead and let's look at this. So I ran checkdb on master. So remember your database context, and it has to be run, or it doesn't have to be run, but I would highly suggest running it. But you should run this against every one of your databases, and I would suggest a schedule that is uh, fairly frequent. And we can see, for instance, it's going through, uh, as a case in point, some of these system objects here. It's telling us how much page, how many rows. So we're looking at this, we can see that it's going through that metadata, right? And so, wow, there's apparently I put a lot of tables in this database that I didn't realize. I think it's because I was copying them, like select star into just for the heck of it. But you can also see, look at it looking at the, uh, the service broker, uh, conversion priorities analyzed, remote services bindings analyzed, conversion groups analyzed, etc. right? So it's going through quite of these objects. The key here, not the only key, because depending on what errors you get, is at the very bottom you'll see checkdb found zero allocation errors and zero consistency errors in the database. Okay, And then, of course, um, if there's an error message, it says <laughs> contact your system administrator. It's not really how companies work anymore at Microsoft. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, contact your DBA. Uh, so if there's zero consistency errors and zero, what is it, uh, allocation errors, uh, allocation errors and zero consistency errors, that's good. But if you see any error and there have been many situations I've run across where there are errors, that means you have a problem. The sooner you address the problem, the better. And the reason is because there's no guarantee. First, of, For instance, if you have a corrupt database that you can even back it up, there's no guarantee if you have a corrupt database that your application is going to run. I know, I know companies that are just taking chances. Uh, and even though the recommendation has been don't do that at all, but to them, it's like, oh, well, who cares? You know, We'll worry about it when it becomes a problem. So if you run across any corruption, get it resolved ASAP uh, because it could be a permanent loss of data. Your application could permanently fail. This is not something you want to take your chances on at all. But again, I, I know the individuals who are like, I'll worry about it later on, and uh, that's a very dangerous thing to do. So that's kind of the, the initial basics of CheckDB, what it does. If you are into that situation where it's running long, uh, if you want to cross off your list of things, you can do the granular approach of CheckTable, and there is a three-part series on that.